I'm at the edge of Shenandoah National Park in Shanks Hollow. This is on the west side of the mountain at the end of Route 658. Here's the road you come up on, and this is the end of the road. This is a, a turnaround place. It says no parking over there. That's somebody's driveway. And this is the entrance to the park right here. I don't think you're supposed to block these roads like this, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to be here for a couple hours anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, park here and head on up that fire road. And a couple things of interest, uh, this road I think may go all the way over to uh, modern day uh, 211, coming down the side of the mountain. And uh, so we'll see if that happens. And also the map, the topo map shows that there used to be an old dwelling up here. So we'll see if there's anything left of that. There's my little red car. And uh, looks like it's going to be a pretty nice day. There's a lot of water coming down off the mountain. It's, we've had a huge amount of rain here in Virginia this year. And, uh, I mean, everything's still green as can be in, in uh, late August. Maybe you can hear the water running. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to get started. Uh, this is a pretty short hike, only a uh, couple miles. But uh, it's, it's something that I haven't explored before. So let's go head up in here and see what we can find. Two tenths of a mile into my hike. It's been pretty flat. The elevation here is about 1,280 feet. I think I started at 1,250. Here's where I came from. A lot of spider webs. And uh, the map tells me that there is, uh, there used to be a dwelling just this side of the creek. Well, the creek's right down there. I can hear it. And this right here looks like the old driveway so I'm gonna bushwhack my way up in here just a little ways to see if I can see anything Three tenths of a mile into my hike, I stepped off the uh, driveway off to the left because I saw this this stone wall. So obviously somebody did live back in here. And it goes on, it goes on up there as far as I can see. The, uh, dri the driveway is back over here. I stepped off, when you're coming up the driveway, I stepped off to the left. And uh, I'll mark the location of the, of the wall. But then I'm going back to see, I'm going to follow the driveway to the end. It's pretty overgrown here, so unless, unless the house is actually still standing part of it up out of the ground, probably wouldn't be able to see anything in, under these conditions. To come back here in the wintertime, maybe, you could, you could find something. So on the opposite side of the driveway from the wall, the wall, stone walls over there, there's the driveway. And I'm standing up on a sizable pile of rubble, which, which is within, uh, according to my GPS, it's within about uh, 200 feet <clears throat> of where the house was marked on, on a map. So <clears throat> this could be, this big rubble pile I'm standing on could be what's left of the house. I'm not sure. 
Uh, probably if it came back in the winter time and took a closer look at what, what's actually here, could uh, get a better idea. But anyway, over there, I can hear the creek. So I'm going to look around just a little bit more. I'm going to actually bushwhack my way to the exact spot that I had marked on my GPS and see if there's anything there. But this big rubble pile is probably what's left of the house. Four tenths of a mile into my hike. I'm back out to the main road. There's where I came from. And uh, that's there's the main road if there is such a thing. That's where I came in. So I'm going to continue on to the left here. If I can get across this creek, I'm not sure about that yet, but we'll get down there and see if we can cross it. And if I can, then uh, we'll just keep hiking to the east until, uh, according to the map, this takes us east all the way to modern day Route 29. So let's see what happens up here by the creek. So yeah, there's part of a culvert here that hadn't washed out. This little section here still hadn't washed out. That's what's left of the rest of the road and looking downstream. So yeah, we can get across here. And uh, judging from the trail, it looks like somebody else has been up this way. So right there is where you cross over the creek. And then uh, on this side, on the east side, there's a potential potential camping spot right there next to the creek uh, not right not right now though not for tents anyway hammocks you could do it but it's too swampy here right now we've had so much rain it's a ridiculous amount of rain this year anyway potential camp spot right there and uh, here we go starting to climb the mountain just a little bit Six tenths of a mile into my hike. I'm up to uh, 1350, and it's starting to climb the mountain a little bit now. There's the uh, there's the road, and uh, right here is an old spring box, and I can hear water running in it, and uh, that one looks pretty old. But anyway, right down there is the. Uh, is the output from it. I'll, I'll go down there and show you what it's running pretty good today. So I guess once upon a time this road was used more by the Park Service or maybe the people that lived back in here back before 1935 or so. Alright, there's your water flow coming out of the spring box. Plenty of water there. One mile into my hike, and this is the end of the road. I'm up to uh, 1,440 feet, and here's where it empties out onto modern-day US 29, right here near this uh, near this bend in the road, coming down. And you could you could probably just for a day hike, you could probably pull in right here and park. I mean, it says fire road, no parking, but if, if you pulled over here out of the way, or over here out of the way, probably nobody would mess with you. It doesn't look to me like the Park Service uses this road much, if at all. Anyway, you'll be able to tell from my GPS track where that is out there. 
but it's it's coming down the west side of the mountain you get down to about 1440 feet of elevation you'll see this off off to the right if you're coming down the mountain heading west so I'm gonna turn around and head on back I just noticed in coming back coming back on my return trip that's the way I'm headed down the side of the mountain but putting this road in was quite a job back in the day. I mean, look at look at this big bank here. How they had to cut cut into the side of the bank. I mean, there there's the road, and here's this big bank that they had to cut into and cut back. And there's several of them like that. And then there was a culvert down here. There's the spring box. So. I don't know. This was this was some kind of like a, a major road to get you down here into Shanks Hollow. There's a big old tulip poplar tree. I can tell from the leaves way up there at the top. You see a lot of these big tulip poplars in the uh, in the park here. This is the Thornton River Orchard on US 29 on the east side of the uh, Blue Ridge. And right here is the Rappahannock County Memorial Chimney. It's dedicated to the families that lost their uh, land uh, up on the mountain when they created the Shenandoah National Park. This is a map of today's hike. The quadrangle name is Thornton Gap, 1994. And I hiked along an old road in Shanks Hollow. This is on the west side of the Blue Ridge, down near the bottom of the mountain, uh, close to Luray, Virginia. This, this red line here is US 211 coming down the west side of the mountain and to to get to this hike the easiest thing to do is just come on down to the bottom of the mountain and you and you go west a few miles and you have to basically make a couple of right hand turns and then you circle back on this road right here in Shanks Hollow which is route 658 and you just follow it all the way down here basically to the end and park right here. Now there really isn't any good parking there. <clears throat> there's a driveway, there's a driveway that heads up this way to the left and then this this is chained off here by the park service, this old road. And there's a sign there of course it says no parking like they do on all, on all the roads. But I figured, hey, a couple hours, middle of the week, and doesn't look to me like the Park Service uses this road anyhow. It's all overgrown. So I parked here and head on into the uh, uh, in, into Shenandoah Park. Now this section down through here is real flat and wet and swampy. We've had a lot of rain here and uh, normal conditions. It might be dry, but it was really. Uh, wet and swampy today. You come down here and this and it was overgrown with with grass quite a bit. You come down here this bend in the road and then you have to kind of keep your eyes open because all this is overgrown but you'll see you'll see this other road branching off to the left 
And so I followed this on up here a little ways until eventually I spotted this stone wall. There's a stone wall that runs along here, sort of like that. And you'll notice on this map there's a little black dot there. Those are used to signify uh, dwellings. So I marked the location of the wall and then the the dwelling is supposed to be south of the of the driveway and north of this little creek here. So I got over here and I didn't find any dwelling but I did find a pretty large pile of rubble uh, like maybe there was a house there once upon a time with stone stone foundation and it's all collapsed in on itself and now it's overgrown with uh, grass and weeds and stuff so I marked that location then I came back here crossed over the creek here there's a culvert there so you can get across without having to you know, way to cross. And then starting here, this thing starts heading uphill. When I got to here is where I found that spring box. Okay. And it was flowing really good. And it looked like a, like a pretty old one. And uh, then I just continued on up, up climbing the hill, climbing the hill. When you get up to about here, uh, this is as high as you get, and then this is slight downhill until you get down to here. This is where the old road uh, intersects with modern day US 211. Now, if, if you know exactly where this spot is, you, you could probably come down here and turn off. There's, there's, I think there's probably enough room there before the chain where you could pull off and park there if you wanted to start there instead but I figured it was easier to just do a big loop and come in Shanks Hollow and park right here it's a real, real short hike 1.8 miles and the elevation gain is only 329 feet but it was something that I wanted to do uh, I, I'm looking for I've hiked almost every trail in Shenandoah National Park now and I'm, I'm looking for things like this that I just ignored in prior years and especially if I see like this if I see a little black dot there that indicates there used to be a struck a dwelling or something and then when I looked on Google Earth I I noticed what looked like a wall there and, and, and there is there is a stone wall there so somebody obviously lived in this dwelling got their water out of this creek and uh, put up that stone wall and then in the 1930s when they created the park, of course, everybody, everybody got kicked off their land. And that was the hike for today.